So Cancer Research UK has recently quoted that one in two people born after 1960 will develop some form of cancer in their life. So cancer treatment has significantly evolved over the years, but there's always room for improvement. So with my work, we're looking at the use of nanoparticles in radiotherapy. So first, what's a nanoparticle? This is a tiny particle that's about a thousand times smaller than a typical cell in your body. Why would we want to use them? Um, firstly, we can actually target cancer cells. So what you see in the image is a cancer cell and the black clusters, these are gold nanoparticles sitting inside the cell. So once we have the nanoparticles inside the tumor, we can then irradiate with some form of radiation and we get a very localized enhancement of dose. So this is great in terms of cancers that are generally radio resistant um, because with this localized enhancement of dose, we're actually making them more susceptible to the damaging effects of radiation. So now that we have this enhanced dose, we can either choose to just leave it as an enhanced dose at the tumor or we can actually reduce the level of radiation that we put in because we know we're gonna get a boost inside the tumor itself. So in terms of my work, I did a lot of computer simulations looking into this effect. And there's a lot of variables that can determine what um, gives us a more optimum setup. So the first of these factors is actually the material of the particle itself. So first we need it to be biocompatible because we want to put this into a patient but we also need it to have a high atomic number such that we see this enhancement effect. Next, we have the size and the concentration. So for the nanoparticle, the size and concentration affects the level of uptake as well as the toxicity and the level of enhancement that we'll actually see. Then we have the beam type and the beam energy. So we usually use x-rays to treat cancer, but there's a growing interest in protons and carbon ion therapy. Um, so this, along with the actual beam energy, will affect the level of enhancement that we'll actually see. So with my work, we actually managed to see instances where we got an enhancement of a factor of 1,000, which is fantastic, but we need to have the most optimized setup. So to conclude, with my work, um, the simulations able, were able to show us um, what our most optimum setup was, and um, it allowed us to really hone in on what the best course of action was. I guess you can appreciate me running a load of simulations is a lot more um, efficient and cheaper than doing experiments. That's not to say we won't do experiments. I do currently radiobiological studies, but I can really hone in on exactly the right ones to do. Thank you.